This is probably going to be the hardest diecast news video I'm going to ever make. Uh, let's see how this goes, folks. So what's up diecast collectors, this is OBB, the diecast news guy, and as you can tell by my tone of voice, I'm not usually as excited and enthusiastic as I usually am, because if you guys are a NASCAR fan, and if you guys tuned in to the uh, delayed Daytona 500 race, um, we were in for a good race, and it was looking to be pretty well, and um, and then we saw the unfortunate that happened with, um, with, with, you know, one of the most underrated drivers in NASCAR, Ryan Newman, so um, I'm... I, before I start this video, I just want to wish my dear consolidates to everybody in the and uh, that has to associate with Ryan Newman, including the driver himself, Ryan Newman, who um, luckily he is uh, awake and alert after that horrifying wreck that happened at the closing lap of the uh, 20, 2020 day 2500. So um, like I mentioned in the introduction, I'm going to try my best to keep things uh, on topic and on point, but um, I'm sure a lot of people, including myself, are in the NASCAR community, are still grieving at this moment. So I will do everything I can for you guys to keep you guys entertained. But like I said, it is going to be pretty hard to do that. But um, we're just going to keep uh, Newman in our head, folks. Uh, but we're, we're just so thankful to ha still have him around and um, in this time of age. But yeah, guys, with that in mind, we do got some new NASCAR uh, diecast news to be talking about here, including everything that happened during Daytona Speed Weeks and, of course, leading up to the big 500-mile race at Daytona. Um, so, yeah, lots of new. Uh, we got the big three, like we always talk about, the new diecast releases, the pre-orders, and the cancellations. Plus, we also do get a new uh, promo to be talking about as well. So, um yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this new episode of the Diecast News as we're going to start things off right now. And let's get on to that slideshow. Hey guys, welcome to the new episode of the Diecast News, episode 225. This is going to be the Daytona edition, so we're going to be talking about everything that has to do with speed weeks leading up to the Daytona 500. But uh, we're going to kick things off with some newly released diecasts from our good friends at Plan B Sales. We do got some more 2019 late releases that were just released, and including some brand new 2020 diecasts. One, and, and one of them in particular is going to be a big favorite. Um, 
and I'm sure it's mostly diecast might look familiar because my good buddy Sidecast Buffet and Race H 111 have already reviewed a good majority of these. I'll probably review some as well. But here we guys go. The first one up, we got some Kevin Harvick diecast. We got his 2019 Bush Ducks Unlimited Ford Mustang for um, Stuart Haas Racing. So this is a car that he drove at Texas, and not only he drove it, but he also won in. But that was pretty cool. I, mean, I was kind of curious where the Ducks Unlimited sponsorship was going to go since, you know, they... Uh, they, they'd sponsored Truex for the last two years with Furniture Row, but last year they went with Stuart Haas, and it looks like they're going to probably stay with Stuart Haas, but um, yeah, this is a very unique looking car. I mean, it is another Bush-related scheme, but I mean, if you guys do love those Bush schemes, I will say, definitely go out and get this car, because it does look really cool, and it's very unique, um, but not as bright, as vibrant as the other ones, um, but it's still, regardless what you guys think of it, it, it's still pretty cool, plus, like I mentioned, he won this car in Texas, so pretty nice. Next up, a lot of people are probably going to be a little confused by this, but this is the 2019 release of Chase Elliott's uh, Mountain Dew car. And a lot of people are like, why did this car wait so long to get released? Because it was released and uh, <laughs> it, we had this scheme in 2018. But if you guys look closely, this is a playoff car. As you can take a look, we do have the playoff green. And uh, I believe it's supposed to be a green splitter, if I'm not mistaken, but it looks like there's a black. So uh, nice job of lying out there, apart from screwing that up. So, but... I take a look. Uh, this also has a round of eight uh, sticker on the. Um, it has a round of eight uh, decal on uh, where the A pillar is. So he drove this at the Martinsville race, and I believe that's the only time he drove that car. Uh, as you can tell by the three race winner stickers as well. But um, yeah, it's basically the same Mountain Dew scheme that a lot of people loved from 2018. And um, yeah, last time we're gonna see this car uh, since we are gonna have an inverted scheme with the Mountain Dew Zero Sugar car that he drove at the Clash. So um, yeah, I mean, still a nice looking car regardless. Uh, next one up is definitely. A big, it'd be a big favorite, especially uh, this might also be Kyle Larson's 2020 scheme with the McDonald's sponsorship. And I just gave it away. It is a McDonald's car. It's his McDonald's McDelivery car. I, I believe he drove at the uh, Indianapolis race, if I'm not mistaken. So this is actually uh, a really unique looking McDonald's car. It does incorporate all the colors pretty well. As you guys, guys, I mean, this is a you know, definitely probably. I don't know. I mean, I, I do like the, the, the regular Mountain Dew, uh, the, not Mountain Dew. Oh my God. I'm getting all my, uh, M's mixed up here. My apologies, folks. <laughs> uh, the, um, the, um, McDonald's, uh, the original McDonald's scheme. I, I didn't mind that with Kyle Larson, but this one actually looks really cool. And like I just mentioned, this is, uh, I believe it's going to be his 2020 McDonald's scheme. So it looks like a lot of people love the scheme and they are bringing it back for this year, um, by the leaked hauler photos that we saw. So, um, expect to see this car, uh, also released in 2020 very soon at, um, whatever track it's going to be running at. But Hey, um, I do like this one a lot. Really cool. I, I think I actually might pick up this car if it doesn't get released in NASCAR Authentics because I really do like this. Plus you yellow 42 we haven't really seen that before so uh very unique looking i do like that a lot all right now time to get some, some 2020 die casts we do got some more kevin Hart die casts to be talking about first up we got his bush car the, the original bush spear car which is going to be a great addition to go along with his bush light car oh uh, i'm sorry his bush light car so uh yes this car does not have the name banners guys i don't know when we are going to have the official window banners uh there's still no eta on those yet from what we know but um once we find out i will give you guys an update um whenever um it's going to be released or announced so stay tuned for that but um yeah still no uh, name banners uh we can see well we do have name banners but no uh um cup series banners up on the front but yeah but still a great looking diecast regardless i do love that bush scheme a lot um i mean my god i, I mean if you guys do love that bush blue i mean my god this is a cool looking car to get um and then we got to talk about a pretty basic looking car but it is his hump Brothers pizza car this is basically gonna be the kid friendly car for all the kids out there who can't have the alcohol cars so this is probably your best bet right here um but i mean still a solid looking car regardless but i mean like i said um, as you can see, this car is missing the Bush logo, so it's not on a base, so it is pretty kid friendly. So, <laughs> um, and next up, we got to talk about a car that we did talk about in the last episode of the Diecast News, but it is still in an advanced run. And by advanced run, I mean that that by advanced run, I mean that there are only limited quantities of this. And uh, I guess you could say it's almost kind of like a promo, but it's more like an early release. Um, we got we got to talk about uh, 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 we got to talk about this car again, guys. The Dale Jr. 2019 Hellman's uh, 
Chevrolet Camaro for the for the NASCAR Xfinity Series for, 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 for uh, from his team at Junior Motorsports. This is the car that he's gonna be driving at Homestead, um, which could be coming up very soon. As you guys know, Homestead is no longer the season finale race for this season um, of NASCAR. So uh, yeah, I mean, a very basic looking scheme, but it does look pretty cool regardless. I mean, it's not a throwback car, but uh, it does look. I mean, it's very basic. I mean, it's basically a yellow car <laughs> with um, with the blue number. But, I mean, heck, if you guys really love your Dale Jr. diecast and the helmet sponsorship, then this will be a cool car to get for sure. Uh, next up, this is going to be the first of many releases we're going to be getting for this driver. Chris Buescher and his new ride with Roush Fenway Racing in the number 17 of 5th 3rd Bank Ford Mustang. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is basically the same scheme that Stenhouse drove last year, but I would still recommend picking this car up considering that this is, you know, Chris Buescher's uh, first time uh, in Roush since, uh, back, since uh, what, like 2015 when he won the Xfinity Championship. So, um, yeah, I, I'm definitely digging this lot. And, I mean, man, it was pretty cool to see uh, Chris Buescher's, uh, Chris Buescher up front. I think he finished in the top five at the Daytona 500. So, you know, he was a cool front runner. So, um, I definitely watch out for this kid. I feel like he's going to pull up a win for Roush very soon because, I mean, heck, we have not seen a win from Roush since, like, my God, uh, God, I, whew, it's, it's been a while, guys. It's been a while since we've seen a, a, a Roush going to victory lane. So it would be pretty cool uh, considering that. But uh, also next up, we got to talk about probably the most favorite uh, die cast um, from the least favorite driver in NASCAR, whether you hate him or love him. We got to talk about Kyle Busch in this very refreshing looking paint scheme. The Interstate Batteries car for this year, guys. They long gone is the green zebra scheme that a lot of people have just grown to hate, including myself. That's why I call it the green zebra car, but no more green zebra car. And now we got like a mountain lightning, a mountain lightning car. You guys know that knockoff brand mountain lightning that they have at Walmart. That's what it kind of looks like. But uh, this was teased a little bit. Uh, this was the official paint team that the uh, NASCAR Heat uh, uh, Pro League uh, drivers used. Uh, the driver of the 18 Interstate Batteries car from that league. Um, he did drove. A scheme just like this and um so it was really surprising but i mean it still looks really cool and refreshing i mean i love it almost kind of gives me some jg yelly vibes when he was driving the lightning bolt interstate batteries car um my god especially even when kyle bush was driving the lightning bolt car as well um for one like 09 if i'm not if i'm not mistaken or 08 but uh, my god guys that is just a fantastic looking diecast probably is the best looking paint scheme by far so far um I don't know why the diecast render never got released. I mean, we only got a little sneak peek of it uh, where the uh, front bumper was, where the headlight was. That's the only peek we got, but glad to see that uh, they kept a surprise. I mean, usually that's not a good thing to do, <laughs> considering it could get canceled, but it's your two-time champion, Kyle Busch, so his diecast will be made regardless, but what a fantastic looking diecast, guys. I love the different shades of green on this car. I mean, my God, that is such a very creative paint scheme. And honestly, out with the green zebra car. Thank God they got rid of it. I mean, my God, this paint scheme just kicks ass. You can also get the 124 scale version as well. So if you guys love that, that's cool. And the last car to be talked about for the 164s, we got to talk about the Hall of Fame, um, the Hall of Fame car from for this year for 2020. So um, definitely different, as you can see right there. They decided to actually add uh, the word 20 with 20. So as you guys know, it is 2020. So that's pretty cool. Um, and it looks like we actually got names. Uh, we actually got the, the five drivers, uh, the, well, the five, uh, the, the five, uh, Hall of Famers that are actually on this car. That's literally the paint scheme. It just has all their five names, uh, printed out in just various patterns. As you guys know, I mean, the five Hall of Famers are Buddy Baker, uh, Tony Stewart, Joe Gibbs, Bob Levante, and I believe the other one, I got to pull up his name. Let's see here. Uh, professionalism as finest right here, guys. I mean, this is the stuff we always do here when it comes to the diecast news uh what uh Waddell wilson i probably pronounced that name wrong but yeah those are the five guys who are in um the nascar hall of fame for this year for 2020 as it looks like rules are gonna be a lot more stricter for the nascar hall of fame for 2021 but still pretty cool but the only thing that kind of bugs me about this car and um why the hell is it on a Ford Fusion mold? <laughs> I mean, the Ford Fusion is pretty outdated now since they've had any. I mean, we've, we, we've, uh, they, they, the Hall of Fame diecasts have used the Ford Fusion mold since 2018. Before that was a Chevrolet SS mold. So, I mean, I don't know. It still feels kind of weird, but I mean, I guess that's. Who knows? Maybe they want to know in the Ford Fusion mold. I mean, to be honest with you guys, it still looks pretty cool, but in terms of. I mean, the Fusion is just so outdated now. I mean, we haven't used it in like almost uh, like a year and a half now. So, yeah. That's land. 
But I'm um, still pretty cool if you guys love collecting a Hall of Fame diecast. I know there are some people out there who do like that. But now time to talk about some new uh, 124 exclusives. We only got three of them, and all of them are Dawn's throwback cars. So here we guys go. Uh, we got to talk about your Dawn throwback Southern 500 winner, Eric Jones, and his number 20 sport clips. Uh, Joy to Camry, uh, Dawn's throwback for Joe Gibbs Racing. Um, this is, I believe, a throwback to one of his uh, first uh, uh, to one of his uh, uh, first. Uh, Car, uh, one of his first race cars that Eric Jones ever drove. It was one of his uh, late models, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, yeah, really cool. Um, if you do actually do the side-by-side -side comparison of this with his actual late model that he drove, um, it's pretty much accurate. Uh, so that was really cool uh, for that to happen. Plus, it is also really cool to have yet another throwback car uh, win the Southern 500. I mean, that's always really cool. But in my opinion, I still think that, I don't know, I mean, between Hamlin's and Kozlowski's uh, Southern 500 wins, I mean, those were two really cool paint schemes that won the Southern 500. But this one doesn't look too bad. Not much good on this, but still looks really cool regardless. And it's yet another Eric Jones diecast for all you uh, Jones Boy fans out there are going to love to get. And to continue the trend of some... Of, of some uh, throwback cars. We got to talk about, uh, this is going to probably be his final throwback car. As you guys know, Dave Reagan uh, stepped away from full-time racing in NASCAR. I am aware that he drove at the Daytona 500, but that's probably the last drive he's going to drive for quite a while. <laughs> we got to talk about David Reagan's, uh, David Reagan's uh, throwback car in his number 38 Shriners Hospitals for Children car. Um, this throwback might look a little familiar because Ricky Stiles Jr. Uh, actually uh, did a throwback to this car in his Cargill car back in 2015 when they first did the throwback schemes uh, for the Southern 500. Um, so yeah, this is, I believe this is a, a David Pearson throwback. So uh, yeah, it's it's not as accurate as I would have liked. Uh, I mean, I know there was a lot of backlash when they released this in, in terms of accuracy. I mean, I mean, just the maroon from the, I, I understand why the maroon is there uh, underneath, uh, underneath where the side skirts are and the quarter panel. I understand why the maroon's there because of the logo, but it just doesn't fit well. I mean, it's all right looking paint scheme. I mean, the font looks pretty cool. But in terms of accuracy, it's definitely a big F, that's for certain. I mean, if you guys really want, you know, that the throwback of that of that of that paint scheme, um, Stenhouse is definitely that the Stenhouse's 2015 Cargill car, definitely a lot more accurate when it comes to that. Um, plus, he did also drove the 17 car as well, if I'm not mistaken, the original car. So hey, but you know, still cool, but it is a recycled throwback scheme. So, but Reagan fans might like it. And the last one to be talking about, we got to talk about Chase Briscoe's number 98. Ford Motor Company, uh, Ford uh, Mustang, Ford NASCAR Xfinity Series. This is a Johnson throwback to Parnelli Jones. So a lot of IndyCar fans out there are going to love that, uh, considering that. Um, we're also going to be getting the 187 scale version of this car in the... Uh, in the uh, two, in the two packs, so I mean that's cool. I'm hoping they we can see this car in NASCAR Authentics because this is a really cool throwback. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised because we've had some Chase Briscoe diecast released lately in NASCAR Authentics, but really am digging this. Even though it's on the um, it's on the Xfinity 124 mold, which is pretty generic. I mean, doesn't have posable wheels or anything like that. So pretty much a hunk of plastic, if I want to call it. But hey, you know, it's still a cool looking paint scheme. I just wish the diecast quality for the Xfinity cars were a little bit better. And that's not including the Junior Motorsports diecast. <laughs> but that is going to wrap up, wrap it up right here for the uh, diecast guys. And now let's get on to the, uh, let's get on to all the pre-orders guys. We're going to be lightning through, we're going to be going through a lightning round when it comes to these pre-orders. And um, yeah, might as well go and start off with what happened at Daytona Speed Week. So we got to talk about Eric Jones and the number 20 sport clips. Uh, Toyota Camry um, that won at the Bush Clash. And what a... What an interesting uh, way to uh, win the Bush Clash. <laughs> I mean, first of all, the Bush Clash, man, what a wreck fest. That race was an absolute wreck fest. I mean, seeing that there was like less than five cars left in the field, I mean, my God, that was just insane. And seeing uh, the Eric Jones's car, I mean, look at that front. Look at that front. Look at the front view of that car. I mean, no one I know, they're probably going to put a decal over that because they cannot replicate the damage. Otherwise, that's going to be really expensive. So I totally understand that. But. Lionel sometimes like to do those illusions. I mean, they did it with the Tyler Reddick Championship car from 2018, um, and the Bristol win from a uh, from a uh, from um, Kyle Busch in 2019. So, I mean, it could happen. I mean, I, I, I'm kind of positive when it comes to this type of stuff. It looks like Lionel has been doing these quite right, but this one definitely is gonna be challenging. So, Lionel, I mean, uh, <laughs> I know I criticize guys a lot, but heck. 
get this one right because a lot of people want this car so i definitely do not see this being on the dmp list but now it's time to talk about the duels guys and uh i uh, for like another year in a row they decided to change the uh <laughs> i'm just gonna call them the duels because they change the sponsor of the duels every single year so um yeah your duel one winner guys we gotta talk about joey logano for the second year in a row he's won a duel race along with this clash win uh from 2018 but also your 2015 daytona 500 champion got to mention that so logano is pretty familiar when it comes to winning a daytona but um yeah you know this one is pretty cool i mean logano fans are gonna like seeing this it's probably gonna get made um, but that's built for pre-order. And now we got to talk about Willie P, guys. We got to talk about William Byron is number uh, 24 Exalta uh, Color of the Year Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 1 LE for Henry Motorsports. This is going to be a race version of the car that uh, he won uh, his first dual race at. So really cool. This is the first race version that we got for William Byron. And I'm not counting the pole win, guys. The pole win is not considered a race version. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, you can compare it to apples to oranges, but not with this. But yeah, still a great looking diecast, guys. And I believe this is also going to be available for pre-order by the time I'm already uploading this. Lionel announced that the 164 pre-order has now just been officially up for grabs so you guys can get this in both scales so that's great for the uh willie b fans out there so can't go wrong with that and i probably should not say willie p willie b anymore because that sounds pretty cringy but now time to talk about your uh yeah the, talk about the big three series well let's start off with the gander outdoor uh well what's it called the gander uh the the, the gander rv and outdoor truck series i mean i guess that's what it's called i don't know I, i'm gonna screw that up either way but yeah, guys, this race was pretty, you know, it was a little boring at first, but then, like, I don't know, it got very interesting towards the end, especially with that big wreck, and I'm a bad roads guy, so that kind of sucked that he got screwed out there. I mean, my God, that, <laughs> he's a, he's long due for a win right now, man. I tell you what, for Ben Rhodes after a pretty bad 2019 season, but... But at least his teammate got it done, guys. We got to talk about uh, a Thor Sport driver, guys. And no, it's not your champion, Matt Crafton. We got to talk about Grant Enfigur and his number 98 champion. Um, hopefully, he can actually be the champion this year and not get screwed out in the playoffs. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, this is his. Uh, if you noticed, all the Thor Sport trucks, they are celebrating their 25th anniversary. So, all four of their trucks, I guess they only did it for this race, the Daytona. I don't know if this is going to be their primaries, but it looks like this is going to be a special for the Daytona races. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool, I mean, um, that they did, like, an anniversary thing for that. It kind of reminds me how Hitter Motorsports did it with their with all four of their cars in 2009. So, I thought that was pretty cool that they did that. So, yeah, Thor Sports has been around for 25 years, man. I mean, that's pretty impressive for a truck team. I mean, this is probably the most popular truck team um, along with KBM and GMS. So, yeah, but this is also going to be available for pre-order in both scales. So, this is yet another 164 truck to add to the list. So, kick her off that. And now we got to talk about our guy, guys, the diecast driver, Noah Gregson. He finally got that W, guys. So, we got to talk about his Daytona win, guys, for another year in a row. I think it's the fifth time uh, that the 9 car or a Junior Motorsports car has won a Daytona. So, Junior Motorsports knows how to win those Daytona wins. <laughs> and I'm just saying, along with Tony Stewart. <laughs> but yeah, Noah Gregson is Bass Pro Shop's... Uh, uh, True Timber Black Rifle Coffee. That's a lot of damn sponsors. <laughs> Just saying. Um, this is the, uh, we do have the standard version of this car, and also probably the best part, the race version, guys. And let me tell you what, guys, Noah Gregson definitely has one interesting personality, and if that, if that celebration that he did, he probably did every celebration that every driver known to man. I mean, probably did do a backflip, but heck, <laughs> uh, we, we don't want to see that kid, you know, break a leg or something, but my god guys i mean uh that that was such a cool uh win to see right there i mean it was definitely a long time coming for this kid i knew he was gonna get it eventually but he got it done guys and might be this might be the kid to watch out for for the nascar Xfinity series now i've said this before i haven't watched the Xfinity series that much but i might consider watching this year because you know we do got some interesting competition i mean i think noah gregson and chase briscoe and austin Sindrick, you know all those veterans now are going to be guys to watch out for but also look out for daniel hemrick and jeff burden because um I said Jeb, not Jeff, Jeb Burton, because those are going to be the guys to watch out for for the Xfinity Series, and also all the JGR guys as well. But enough of me talking about the Xfinity Series, guys. Uh, those cars are available for pre-order, so really cool. And now we got to talk about your Daytona 500 winner, Mr. Three Time. This win's probably not going to be popular because uh, <laughs> uh, we're going to get to that in a second. got to talk about Danny Hamlin's number 11 FedEx Toyota Camry um, for Joe Gibbs Racing. This is the 
third time out of five years this guy has won the Daytona 500. So he's looking like a favorite. I think he's now fourth on the all-time win list for the Daytona for Daytona wins. So my God, I mean, that is something really cool to be proud of, especially if you're a Hamlet fan. But I am well aware that this win was not popular considering that uh, <laughs> with the whole situation with Ryan Newman happening in the background, Danny Hamlin and his team, including Joe Gibbs, decided to uh, celebrate a little too hard and totally forgot to uh, look at their surroundings because, my God, they got booed like crazy. So, yeah, just saying. I mean, I, I know a lot of people probably lost lost a lot of respect to that. And, you know, I'm kind of in the ballpark there as well, but I'm not getting too controversial about that because we got a lot of other stuff to talk about on this show, guys. So, but, yeah, just all I can say is that look at your surroundings and don't celebrate too hard like Hamlin. So, just saying. Um, next up, we got to talk about, well, that wraps up on the... Uh, everything that happened at Daytona. So if you guys enjoyed that little uh, mini review on those cars, but now time to go to the lightning round and get through all these other remaining pre-orders. So first one up, we got to talk about the man who I think is going to have a bad season this year, um, just by how everything's been going so far with the new crew chief change. We got to talk about Brad Kozlowski and his number two PBG paints Ford Mustang. Now I'm going to get a little salty here, but as you guys know me, I'm a Ryan Blaney fan and my God, that's now two sponsors in a row that Kozlowski has took. Dent Wizard, which Blaney won at Talladega with. And now PBG, the iconic PBG car that lots of Ryan Blaney fans love. It's now moving to the two car. I mean, I guess this Miller Lite sponsorship really is screwing over Kozlowski. I mean, my God, but now it's screwing over Blaney because he's not got that much sponsors now. I mean, he only has one new sponsor for this year, which is Advanced Auto Parts. Um, but... I got a lot of mixed feelings about this. I mean, as you guys know, I definitely prefer the uh, 12 PBG car a lot more than this, but I don't know. I mean, they could have probably changed up the paint scheme. It would look nice, but it's the same paint scheme. And to be honest with you guys, I call me crazy. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I mean, it definitely needs to go back with Ryan Blaney. Otherwise, change the paint scheme because that's just basically like an F you to the Blaney fans out there. But that's about for pre-order. Uh, now we got to talk about Ryan Newman's cash draw car. I mean, and this is the car that he was supposed to drive at Auto Club, but we don't know. I mean, I mean first of all, I don't even want to get into any details of who is going to be substituting the six car. To be honest, I don't really give a, I don't really, shit, I don't really give a ass, <laughs> ass rats of who's going to be driving the six car. I'm just thankful he is alive and he's going to make hopefully a speedy recovery. Um, but my God, guys, uh, definitely recommend getting this car. Um, and shout out to Roush Racing as well. Roush Trainer Racing, they were actually posing a teaser of this new sponsor. A lot of people were wondering what this was, but they kind of gave it away with the B pillar, uh, with the B, with the sponsor being on the B pillar. So uh, yeah, <laughs> don't leave it to Roush when it comes to paint scheme reveals because they kind of spoiled it on this one. But really cool that Castrol is coming back on board. As you guys know, we haven't had the Castrol sponsorship since uh, Casey Atwood um, when we, uh, when he drove that famous 27 uh, Castrol gtx car but uh really cool to see this back uh, it seems like uh roush loves picking up all those oil sponsorships i mean we already have performance plus and now castrol so i mean heck i mean who knows it'll probably go along with the pens oil scheme if i'm, if I'm right <laughs> but uh heck can't go wrong with that guys that would be a great addition to go along with the automotive uh, mechanics collection for me <laughs> Uh, next up, we got to talk about Daniel Hemrick and his number eight South Point Hotel and Casino Chevrolet Camaro for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. I believe he's only going to be driving this at the two Las Vegas races because how appropriate, you know, South Point is, um, you know, uh, Brendan Gunn, you know, has sponsorship with that. I think he also uh, owns that as well, if I'm not mistaken. So that was cool that South Point uh, returned as a sponsor for Daniel Hemrick because they did sponsor with them when he drove for Richard Childress Racing in that 21 car a few years ago. So glad to see they are making a return. But it looks like only for two races. But still, great looking diecast. I'm hoping this car will get made because we have not yet to see a South Point car released in the 1CC4 scale um, for Daniel Hamburg. And now we got to talk about Eric Jones' number 20 Craftsman 164 and 124. Um, those are available for pre-order. Um, yeah, third year in a row that the Craftsman scheme has not changed. But, I mean, why change it? It still looks pretty cool. I mean, this is a scheme that I could probably go on for another year or two for with, with it. I mean, it's just so basic. It looks really cool. And plus, it's going to have the updated uh, name banners and the Cup Series logo. So, yeah, still a nice looking car. I do like that a lot. And this one right here is a very unique uh, car uh, that uh, Corey LaJoy is going to be driving two races in. Um, this is a car that he's going to be driving at Auto Club and all the way at the season finale race, guys. So they already got a car set up for the season finale uh, at Phoenix. But we got to talk about Corey LaJoy and his uh, Paula Casino 
um, Resort and Spa Ford Mustang for uh, Go Fast Racing. So a very random car, um, but my God, guys, this is, uh, and what a weird render as well when it comes to that. I mean, it looks like it, it's from uh, Phoenix, but heck, uh, the car's having a run of Phoenix yet. Maybe this is like a test run, but I don't know. It looks like it's Photoshopped, but I mean, I don't know, guys. I mean, this is definitely a very unique car, but uh, keep this guy in mind because we will be talking more about him when it comes to a, another topic, which is controversial. Um, I don't know, just saying. And now we got to talk about yet another Ford Mustang diecast, and it is Michael McDowell is number 34 loves travel stop Speedco Ford Mustang for Front Row Motorsports. So we got ourselves yet another car to, uh, well, first of all, loves returning again. I think this is what, like their eighth season in a row sponsoring with Front Row. So, I mean, they're pretty much a long time sponsor now at this point. And my God, guys, I mean, uh, the love scheme has never changed, but I can tell you what, guys, um, I, I, I di I'm digging the scheme. I'm glad it made a return. I'm especially for Michael McDowell. Um, really cool to see Michael McDowell in the 34 car. So um, yeah, that's really awesome right there. Now we got to talk about some trucks, guys. We got some more trucks that are going to be added to this list now, um, especially for any uh, Nice Motorsports fans. Uh, we already got Natalie Deckers, but now we got to talk about these next three drivers. Well, first one up, this is going to be a guy who ran the Xfinity Series last year uh, with Junior Motorsports for a couple races, but he's going to be driving six races in this truck uh, for Nice Motorsports. It is uh, Mark Truex Jr.'s uh, younger brother, Ryan Truex, in his number eight Marquez Spa um, Chevrolet Silverado for Nice Motorsports. So he, like I said, he will be running this truck six races, and you know this is will be a nice this will be a nice truck to get, guys. We have not had a 4D truck released ever, so that'll be another number to add for the uh, for the truck 164s uh, or any the uh, whether you collect 124s or 164s. But really nice. And to go along with number 40, we got to talk about our good buddies, Plan B Sales, because they are back at it again with the sponsorship. Uh, we got to talk about uh, Ross Chastain, guys, and his number 40 Plan B Sales Chevrolet Silverado for Nice Motorsports. This is, of course, the, the truck that he drove at the uh, Daytona race. So really nice looking. And to go along with this, we also got Ty Majeski's number 45 Plan B Sales truck. I mean, this truck is also pretty infamous. It, it is Infamous me, uh, infamously known for doing a flip at the Daytona truck race. Um, yeah, it kind of rolled over and did a little flip, but you know, nowhere near as bad as uh, Ryan Newman's, but still is something uh, to be a little concerned about. But um, yeah, a Ty Majeski 164 truck. That is really cool. As you guys know, he's running full time in the truck series as a rookie. So that'd be a guy to watch out for because, I mean, we didn't really see much potential with him with... Uh, when he was driving for Roush in the Xfinity series a few years ago before they uh, defunded as a team. So really nice. And to go along with an, all the number 40s, we got to talk about an ARCA car. This is our first ARCA car that is going to be, uh, that that is up for pre-order. Uh, it is Thad Moffitt, guys. So third in a row, we're going to have a Thad Moffitt car um, in the pre-orders in his um in his 2020 number 46 richard petty signature series performance plus motor uh performance plus motor oil uh ford fusion for the argus series so um yeah i mean i'm definitely getting a lot of eric amarola vibes looking at this car guys when he drove the smithfield car definitely looks like that i mean definitely i it just sm smack some smithfield logos on this car and you got yourself say eric amarola throwback right there just saying i mean kind of early to say that because you know it's still kind of recent with Derek Amarola joining Stuart Haas. But, um, yeah, um, let's say that is a unique looking car. I can only imagine if it's going to get produced or not because it seems like the 124 is the only things that will get produced on this bad boy. And the, the uh, we got uh, one more pre to be talking about, guys, and it is Alex Bowman's number 88 Chevy Goods NOCO. <laughs> uh, that's a funny word to say. Chevy Goods NOCO. <laughs> uh, Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 1LE for um, Henry Motorsports. This is uh, basically, I guess you could say, almost an unsponsored car, but it has to do with Chevrolet. Um, I never even heard of NOCO, but uh, feel free to fill me in on what the hell that is. But this is one out of the few uh, Chevrolet cars that he'll be driving. There are some other Chevy associated sponsored cars to go along with this. Uh, they did like a little paint scheme reveal of like the four Chevrolet cars that Bowman will be driving. So I guess this is going to be the fill in sponsor for Nationwide, considering, you know, they dropped out for this year and they're no longer sponsoring for NASCAR or Hendrick Motorsports. So um, yeah, that's uh, very interesting. I mean, uh, it's a very basic looking car, but I mean, 
looks better than the Lumar window film car. <laughs> but speaking of that, guys, it's time to get to the cancellations. And mine has mentioned the Lumar window film car because we got three of them to talk about. And what do you know? The first one up, it is the Alex Bowman Lumar window film car. Now, this car is only canceled in the 124 Elite and ARC. So 164 collectors, you're gonna get this. Um, this you're gonna get this atrocity. But still, it is a. I, I don't know. I mean. <sighs> you know, whoever designs the cars for Lumar for Lumar really needs to get a mental check because it literally looks like someone took acid. I mean, blue numbers, and then it's like white, and then red, and then orange, and then it's like a yellowish orange. Like, who the hell comes up that up that? And then it has a black bumper. I mean, my God, it's such an ugly looking paint scheme. I mean, I didn't mind the car that he drove. Uh, what like a few years ago at the Southern 500 in 2018, I believe. But this one right here is just. Freaking ugly, man. I mean, ugh. But the 164 did got made surprisingly. I thought it was going to be canceled on all scales. But yeah, that's that. And to go along with another 124, um, to go along for the 124s, we got to talk about Coyla Joy. That's another driver I mentioned that we're going to be mentioning again. Coyla Joy in his number 32, uh, sh uh, Shuttler. I'm going to say this wrong again. Uh, Shuttler. Um, systems Ford Mustang for Go Fast Racing. This is only canceled in the 124 Elite scale, guys. So if you guys love the Elite cars, even though they are probably the most expensive uh, scale you can buy to date, um, but that's just what I gotta say about that. You guys should probably know that by now for any longtime viewers. But yeah, 124 Elite has only been canceled in that scale. So 124 ARC and 164 has been made. So I mean. At least we're getting 164 and 124 ARC is being made, so not a big loss right there, but hey, I, I'm sure the elite collectors out there are losing their shit right now. <laughs> and the final card to be talking about, guys, for this cancellation, uh, this is actually a very unique one, guys, so just pay attention to what I'm about to say because it's going to bring on to our next topic, which is a promo. I think this is the first time that we've done this on the Diecast News, so this is some very odd timing, but... We got to talk about Brad Kozlowski's number two Dent Wizard for Mustang. This has been canceled in the 124 Elite scale and 164. Now, put an asterisk where 164 is because we're going to be keeping that in mind in a second. But yeah, the 124 Elite has been canceled, but the 124 RC looks like it's going to be made. But all I can say is that maybe that's some payback right there for uh, Dent Wizard uh, signed to, 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 for Dent Wizard side to go on board with Brad Kozlowski instead of Ryan, uh, Ryan Blaney. So, I don't know. PBG? Looks like you might be next on the list, buddy. But, yeah, the 164, guys. This is going to bring on to the next topic because even though I just announced that this car has been canceled, it looks like the sponsor Dent Wizard picked this car up and it looks like it's going to be made into a promo. Now, usually this does happen. I think this also happened with uh, one of the 2020 Danny Hamlin cars. I think it was like his Fright or Ground car. That's going to be made into a promo too. I'll get more info on that once we, uh, yeah, once we get our sources. But I heard about that on the Diecast fans Twitter. But yeah, guys, this is our new promo, guys. Um, my God, the, the, the Dent Wizard car. <laughs> um, at first, I thought it was a custom. Uh, someone pointed it out to me on eBay. Uh, someone was selling on eBay. I was like, "That's some really odd timing." Because this was this this post of the of the Dent Wizard car um, was literally like a few days, like not even like two or three days after I posted the cancellation. So I find that kind of odd, and it kind of also a lot of people are kind of skeptical now if the cancellations are legit or not. Lionel's been really iffy for the cancellations lately, so I do apologize if the cancellations do feel weird and they don't sound legit, but that's Lionel for you. It looks like Lionel screw it, can't get organized with that, so um, Lionel screw-ups is one thing I have to put up with, so you guys know me. I, You guys should know by that by now. But yeah, the Dent Wizard card, I mean, um, I mean, cool looking box. I do like how it's a promo. A lot of people are like, oh, is it a promo? Well, I'm going to show you guys the other legit photos. I mean, well, first of all, here is the other side if you guys want to see that, but pretty much exactly the same. But, um, and then here's uh, the Dent Wizard sponsorship on the uh, right side. And to make this even more legit, oh my God, look at that piece of hair. That's pretty gross. <laughs> um, yeah, it's legit, guys. That is the uh, official tag right there for the promo. I'm not a big fan of that piece of hair right there or the dented box. Hopefully that sucker is selling it for cheap on eBay because um, that's, yeah, that, that's not up to my standards. But I mean, yeah, and a lot of people wonder, okay, besides eBay, which someone's probably scalping it like crazy, it's probably gonna be a $50 car if I had to guess. Just saying, that's how it was with the uh, Gray Golding Panini car. But 
I believe you can only get this at a convention that Dent Wizard had, I guess, in Las Vegas, if I'm not mistaken. So, if you guys are at Las Vegas, and if you guys see this car, feel free to let me know, because it might show up. I mean, I probably got that source wrong, but someone told me that it was at some sort of very small convention that was at Vegas, um, or probably somewhere else. But, I don't know, we'll, we'll probably see this car again, but so far this is just an estimate of what we're going to be seeing. So keep an eye out for this car, guys. If you guys find any more information about this, feel free to let me know, and I will uh, give you guys more updates about that on the next episode of the Diecast News. But with all things aside, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this new episode of the Diecast News. It looks like I got a lot, a lot more energy now after doing all these Diecasts, but... Still though, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you guys ever need someone to talk to after seeing this traumatizing event, uh, I have, uh, you feel free to DM me on, um, on Discord or YouTube or on my Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. All three of those, three, all three of those, or all four of those, I have uh, links on my channel on those. But um, yeah, because that event was very traumatizing, and still, am praying to god ryan newman makes a great recovery um we still don't know what conditions he has i mean i understand he his conditions were non-life-threatening but they are still pretty serious so we'll just keep an open eye out for that guys i mean i don't really want to get too more about that just to show some respect toward him and his family but um yeah guys well all things aside guys i mean let's just pray for newman and um let's just uh hope the best can happen guys and hopefully we don't have to deal with this tragedy uh, we don't have to deal with um, anything like this ever again but at the end of the day racing is dangerous and that's something that we do uh, have to um, live up for for that but um, yeah guys this has been the diecast news thank you guys so much for watching this has been OBB the diecast news guy and uh, stay safe everybody this has been the diecast news